Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to head out to a mountain biome for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want to acquire some emerald ore. It's my favorite block in the entire game. I want to silk touch some emerald ore since we've encountered it previously, but we fortuned it just to demonstrate that we could. And from now on, I'm planning on stocking up on a bit of emerald ore for future building projects and just to have it because it's, like I said, one of my favorite blocks in the game. And to that end, we're going to have to go out in search of a mountain biome. Now, I decided that we should turn this into a bit of a project. And what I want to do, maybe not in this episode because I expect it's going to take a long time, but we are going to take a look at ore distribution throughout a mountain biome in Minecraft because mountain biomes end up really high in the world. They can get to about Y256, I believe, is like the maximum height a mountain can be. We might not find one that tall, but we're going to find one that's as tall as possible and up there it is possible to get way more coal ore and iron ore than you can get basically anywhere else in the world because the higher in the world you go the more of those ores you can expect to find and from there we're going to mine out an entire chunk of the mountain going down further and further into the world and take a look at how the distribution of ores changes now this is something that we already know quite a lot about as a community thanks to a graphic that Mojang themselves provided when they were redistributing ores throughout Throughout the world when the world was made deeper at the beginning of Minecraft 1.18. So we know more or less what we're going to find, but is that representative of what the player is going to find in the average chunk? Well, we're going to find out today, or maybe tomorrow, or maybe in a couple of days time, depending on how long this takes me, because mining out an entire chunk is a long process, but we're going to take a bit of a shortcut to that. As you can see, I've been AFKing a lot at my mob farm to get hold of a handful of bones, and we could even convert these into bone blocks and stash a few more in this shulker box. But we are going to mark out a chunk, a 16 by 16 area of terrain, in the tallest mountains that we can find, and we're going to use moss to convert all of the stone and dirt and deep slate and stuff that we would dig out of that hole into moss using bone meal. And then using the hose that we've got in here, which we'll probably have to repair, we're going to mine out all of that moss, and it means we'll be able to take a bunch of moss home with us. We could even compost it if we need to to get a bit more bone meal, but at the end of all of that, it's gonna mean we have a massive hole dug out of a 16 by 16 area in a mountain biome, and we can take a look at all of the ores that we can find in the walls of that chunk. Now, before we go ahead and do that, the first thing I'm going to do is put Unbreaking and Mending on my shield, like I promised to do at the end of the last episode, because I managed to get another Unbreaking and Mending book from my villagers, and now at last we have hold of a shield which is going to last us for the foreseeable future, as long as we can gather enough XP while we're fighting stuff. I've also got another Mending book with me, just in case we want to put that on any of my other equipment, but for now I'm just going to stash that in here, and we'll probably head back over to the villagers to do a little bit more trading, just so that I can repair the hoe that's in my ender chest, because because I think that one's looking a little bit the worse for wear. And lately my favorite trading loop is to trade some string that we got from the spider farm to this Fletcher, and then go to these librarians so that we can buy a bunch of glass from them for emeralds. I have been actually farming a bit of sand out in the desert biome that I found a while ago, but that's mainly so we can create concrete powder and TNT. Any of the glass I end up using in this world, more often than not, I've got it from librarians. And a few trades later on, netherite hoe is looking much better. The fortune on this won't matter a great deal, but we are going to be mining a lot of moss with it. So we need to make sure it's in a good state of repair. Now let's fly north of here and see if we can locate the mountains that we visited in the past. Here we go, that's what I'm talking about. This is at Y190-ish, I gotta say. Yeah, like a roughly Y190 summit here. Even actually 200, that's pretty good. Still about another 60 blocks of potential height in some of these mountains, so I'm not sure if we will settle here, but I'm definitely going to take the coordinates since these are relatively close to our spot spawn point and to other locations we have traveled to. This is also the site of a pretty cool looking village where there is a ravine of, of sorts here, a valley, where the entire village, give or take these two houses, is situated down there. And you wouldn't know <laughs> that there was a village there at all were it not for the fact that there were a couple up here on the cliff top. Because from the sides, there's a couple of paths, but not really much else going on, and another spectacular looking dripstone cave beyond that. The dripstone cave is another reason I probably won't do my moss mining project here, because there's a chance that we'll just end up falling straight through the floor and into the dripstone cave below, and that's not really going to give us a good representative sample of ore distribution if half the cave underneath it is hollow. So let's keep looking for locations and we'll try and find some 
something a little more solid. While they aren't the largest set of mountains I've found, this set of mountains over here, 4,000 blocks away from spawn, has a massive vein of calcite running through it. This isn't just on the surface either. If we dig down, that goes a pretty decent distance. It even seems to go down into this cave where World Generation has kind of pulled it down into the cave carver. So if you are interested in building something out of calcite and the meager amount you get from geodes doesn't seem like enough, try and locate one of these Stony Peak mountain biomes because they often have these large veins of calcite running through them that make it very easy to get hold of the stuff. Also, incidentally, uh, there's a ruined nether portal here, so I might as well put out the fires next to the chest and take two free blocks of gold, okay? Which reminds me, we need to get started on piglin bartering sometime soon. I think we may have found the world's smallest frozen peaks biome. <laughs> this thing is only 158 on the y-axis and yeah, it's a pretty small patch of ice here. <laughs> Here's a slightly larger one. <laughs> this one only weighs in at about Y158 itself, but yeah, a little bit larger of a biome to work with. A lot of goats around here as well. So in all the areas I've searched, I'm pretty sure the tallest mountain I can find is this one over here, which is actually kind of embarrassingly just north of the first one that I showed off, the one that has the village in the valley just nearby. And I think that peak over there is the tallest one that we've found in this entire world within about a, I don't know, 3,000, 4,000 block radius or so. I deviated a little bit from that, but right here, I think this block is the highest I've been in this world while still standing on solid ground. Why 216? So still about 40 blocks off where I might expect the tallest mountain in the world to cap off, but it does have a pretty decent side view here. It's got a very sheer cliff from which we can start to see a bit of the ore distribution at work. And as you can see, a lot of surface iron, bunch of surface coal, there's probably even some emeralds around here as well. So what I've done is pulled up the debug information that shows me the chunk boundaries, the 16 by 16 area around here, and we are weirdly close to the maximum height of the world up there at Y320. As the sun sets, we're going to mark out a boundary around the outside of this area, and inside that boundary, we're gonna be converting all of the natural blocks we can into moss, and we are going to be destroying this section of the mountain peak. Don't worry, there are so many other mountains around, and there's so much space around here. We are, what, like, yeah, 1,800 blocks away from spawn. I'm probably not going to come out to this area all that much, but I think it's going to be a really interesting way of sampling a chunk, basically, showing what all generates down here in the lower reaches of the mountain. In order to mark out the boundary, we're going to need some blocks, and I guess we'll probably use the glass that I ended up trading. I was considering for a second using the obsidian, but no, I think the glass is going to look a little bit nicer floating up here in the sky once we've removed the chunk. I'm not going to have glass go all the way down into the ground because I feel like that would look kind of ridiculous, like this giant empty skyscraper kind of thing, but we are going to mark out the boundary up here just to make sure that I don't exceed the outer boundary of this chunk while I'm mining the whole thing out. Once we reach ground level, it's going to be a lot more effort, but for now, this is the area that we're going to be digging out. And in the process of this, I'm going to be leaving all of the ores because thankfully, moss does not take over ores. It doesn't spread to ore blocks. Come to think of it, I don't think it spreads to snow either. So we might have to start this out after we've dug out this snowy area, but I might as well give that a try just by breaking down a little bit of bone meal. And yep, looks like we didn't convert any of the snow throughout any of that. So we're going to completely reveal all of the stone in the surrounding area, which should give us a fighting chance of converting a little bit more of it to moss. So we're going to get rid of the chunk boundary lines like so. And as long as we're working within this area, we should be fine. Now moss only spreads to blocks which don't have something covering them, so if we create a kind of snow wall around here, then we're not going to have to worry about any of the blocks adjacent to this converting into moss. And just one quick bone meal of the moss there converts most of the blocks in the surrounding area. So we're going to start taking these down a layer at a time, and we'll start moss mining out this entire chunk. I've got another spare shulker box here which I'm going to be storing all of the moss blocks and azalea in. We'll obviously have to come back for another shulker box because we're going to be acquiring a lot of this material as we go, but the hoe is going to make it nice and easy to clear out all of these blocks one at a time, and once we reach ground level, it's going to be a lot easier to maintain the chunk boundaries because moss won't spread to the surrounding walls. And what I really want to see with this episode is how easy it is to mine out an entire chunk this way. Is moss mining something that we want to do in future when we're tearing down large areas like this, clearing out an entire chunk in service of building something like, for example, a slime farm? But I think for the sake of this video, we can probably bring in a camera account, and I'm going to do this in the form of a time lapse.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. And look, we've only destroyed a little bit of this mountain. <laughs> it's actually still really high up in the world. We're talking about we're at Y161, 160-ish around here as we stand on that platform over there. And that shows in the amount of ores we've been able to uncover. As you can see, tons of coal up here. And coal generates in such large blobs. If we take a look at some of these, they've got huge amounts of of coal ore in them and the iron ore tends to be a little bit more reserved you don't get nearly as large amounts of iron ore all clumped together as you do with the coal ore look at that one for example still continues back into the wall behind it but we are seeing a fair amount of it and even something that you never saw in minecraft prior to world generation changing like this multiple pieces of emerald ore side by side. We even have a couple down here that I failed to notice until I got down to ground level. And part of the reason I've stopped here instead of going all the way was that one, my recording drive was getting full up because that was an hour's worth of footage condensed into just a few short minutes and that's pretty big when you're recording in 4k. The other thing is that my hoe is less than half durability, my elytra are less than half durability, and I have now filled four shulker boxes with moss and moss byproducts so we are clearly working with an awful lot of material here notice that i haven't actually been composting any of this one of the things you can do when you are moss mining this way is to compost the moss so you get more bone meal and that reduces the amount of blocks that you end up taking away but it allows you to effectively have renewable bone meal throughout the entirety of this project that's one of the things I don't like about the moss mining method, actually, because it means that you've taken out this large area of terrain, but you've walked away with nothing that you can use as building material. And one of the things that I find most rewarding about clearing out large areas like this is acquiring material that you can use for other builds. If you're taking this whole thing down as stone, which would have taken... I mean, it would have taken me all day to get down to this far, then I think it's kind of worth it because then you end up bringing home a lot of cobblestone or natural stone that you can turn into stone bricks and various other things. You can use that to build a castle with the amount of area that we have cleared out of here. In this case, of course, we are taking away all of the moss and that's going to be used for terraforming and all sorts of other stuff besides. And as I said, we could turn it into bone meal if we're not planning on using it at all. And speaking of the bone meal, you'll be delighted to hear that we've actually not used very much bone meal at all in taking this down. Now, granted, half of the chunk wasn't there. The terrain higher up on the mountain did not take up nearly as much of the surface area of the chunk, and so we didn't end up using a huge amount of bone meal to spread the moss. But now we're getting down to this level. It's taking maybe 16 pieces of bone meal to spread the moss out to all of the corners. That's a rough estimate. I haven't really calculated it. But in all this time, in having taken down, like I said, probably close to 80 layers of terrain here, I've only ended up using about three and a half stacks of bones. And even then, I've got a bit of bone meal left over in my inventory. Remember, that central square there was moss. So really, we've only ended up using a few of the stacks of bones that we brought with us and then half a stack from this stack here. So really, we are working with a very minimal amount of bone meal for maximum impact on the terrain around us. And I expect some players who have a bit more experience with Minecraft will wonder why we didn't just do this with a beacon. And I haven't really got to the point where I can explain beacons in the series yet. They actually require a fair amount of preparation. You need to fight the Wither to get them, which is an optional boss, which requires farming other items. You've got to do the fight and then you've got to prepare an area for the beacon to be set up. So it's a little bit of extra prep. It does mean you can mine the stone layers of this very effectively, about as fast as we were doing with the moss, where you can more or less instantly mine it with a decent enough hoe and it means you walk away with all of the stone and whatnot as you're mining all of this out and that would work for these top layers of stone but then of course we end up reaching lower and lower in the world until we reach y0 where the world starts to be taken over by deep slate the composition of the world becomes entirely a block that takes twice as long to mine as stone does and at that point even having a beacon and the most efficient pickaxe that it's possible to get in survival will not help you so i think it's actually really useful to know that methods like moss mining exist and that you can take down large areas like this relatively simply by converting all of the natural blocks into moss. Now, if you'll excuse me, I do need to head back to my base, mostly to drop off all of the moss and supplies, probably also to visit the villagers again to mend my tools and my elytra, and I don't think we'll need a great deal more bone meal, but we might need a great deal more shulker boxes. I am happy to report, though, that from the other side, it doesn't look like we've done a huge amount to the mountain. <laughs> if you take a look at it from over here on this other mountain peak or nearby, the only sign that we've interfered with the terrain at all is the fact that there's got this 
this sort of halo of glass blocks around there, all of which ended up getting covered in snow. You can also see the same has happened to the ores, and that reminds me of one other thing that I wanted to cover actually before we head back to the spawn base, is that while I was working on this, you might have noticed this in the time lapse, it got very snowy, and unfortunately because it wasn't anywhere near night time, I couldn't skip the night to clear away the snow. That meant that snow layers were settling on the ground around me, and that meant that whenever I tried to convert the stone blocks around them into moss, any that had snow layers on top of them would not convert because the snow was occupying the block above, and that's one of the rules that moss observes when it's trying to convert blocks around it. It doesn't convert anything that's got any kind of block on top of it, whether that's a torch, another piece of stone, or a layer of snow. So at that point I was having to shovel away snow as I was laying down the moss and bone mealing it to continue clearing the area out, and that got a little bit awkward, so it was kind of nice to be able to sleep the night away eventually and clear up the snow ourselves. But that could be very easily resolved if you want to try something like this yourself and you're starting in an area where it does snow, like a mountain biome, simply by filling in the area over the top of this chunk, probably with glass so that you can still let skylight through and that's not going to have an effect on the surroundings below you in terms of light level, but if the snow layers start to fall, they will fall on top of this area of glass and they would get blocked from falling any further, meaning that you wouldn't end up having snow layers generating on the ground while you're trying to bone meal the moss and clear the area out. So back to the spawn base, we're going to drop off some of this, and then I think maybe we'll time lapse another hour's worth of the project and see how deep we can get in the world. Okay, tools and elytra are repaired, and we are back over here. The goats are leaping, and we are ready to start the second wave of our mining project here. The one thing I am doing differently is that I have brought a composting setup with me, because when I was putting away all of the moss and moss carpet from the previous session, I realized the moss carpet is kind of redundant. You don't really need it. We're going to be able to farm enough moss that we can make moss carpet if we want to, and we are much better off bone mealing all of that. So what we're going to do is set up a, an auto composter linked into this chest right here, and we may as well just set it up like so, have a double chest on top with some hoppers feeding in, and then whenever I want to drop off any of the moss carpet, I'll just throw it straight into the composter here. I do want to keep the moss blocks, so we'll stash those in the shulker box, but the wheat seeds and probably the azalea will go in this as well, so that we'll be able to generate a bit of bone meal as we go. And yeah, I have just managed to put that outside of the chunk that we're trying to mine out, so it's not going to be a problem and in the way. Right, let's get the the second time lapse kicked off, let's bring in the second account for the camera and let's get right to it.
And one time lapse later, we are a lot further down in the Earth. We are at Y122, so we're basically 64 blocks above sea level right now, but about 90 or so blocks down from where we started, give or take. So we're doing pretty well at this whole mine out an entire chunk thing, and it's been pretty easy going, aside from the one time when I fell down into what is now this kind of boxed off ravine section down here. There is most definitely some mob activity outside of there, but I'm trying my best to ignore it and barricade it off from the area that we're trying to use here. And as we can see already, we'll probably go more into this in a future episode once we get a better look at ore distribution, but we're already starting to see a pretty significant difference between how much coal and iron we were finding up there, where it's basically you turn around and there's another vein, and now here it seems a lot more sparse. Yes, we have veins in the adjoining walls, but it's not absolutely littering the place, and this section here is completely barren. I haven't taken any of the ores out. I have tried my best to remove stone blocks when I can, but I did end up skipping a couple just by mistake here and there. And overall, it's been pretty straightforward to do. As you can see, my netherite hoe is now a massive mess. It's very, very close to breaking, but that's fine. We'll go and repair it as we did before. As far as bone meal usage, we are still barely into our supply here. We have used up, yeah, that's just like six spaces with a little bit of extra bone meal left in our inventory. Six stacks of bones. Probably didn't even need to make a mob farm to get this far, although the bones that take us the rest of the way are going to be much more helpful. And I honestly think that having the composter here getting through all of the moss carpet and turning that into bone meal has probably been helping us more than the supply of bones really lets on. As before, we have basically four whole shelker boxes full of moss blocks this time, so probably even more moss than we brought home last time. We've got two more in there as well, and that one's not quite full, but it's almost there. So this is a fantastic way of getting hold of moss if you have a chunk that you don't want and you really want to see or collect even all of the ores. And we will, of course, be mining out all of these, and I was very tempted to mine the emerald ores once I discovered there was a vein of three right there there, along with a couple of others around the place, but I decided for this chunk in particular, I'm going to be leaving them alone, so as I mentioned, we can get a more accurate picture of what a chunk's worth of the new ore distribution in Minecraft looks like. For now, I'm going to pack up my ender chest, we're going to sleep for the night just so we skip this next night. I want to fly out of here and look at this from the top down and see exactly what all of this is looking like so far. I'm going to leave the composting set up here because we'll probably return to this project on a live stream later today and you'll get to see a little bit more of the process of digging this out. I think maybe four or five more hours worth of work and we'll have this dug all the way down to bedrock, which is going to look a little bit absurd. But frankly, it looks a little bit absurd already. <laughs> Just looking at it from up here on the side of the mountain, I'll try and, yeah, I'll set down somewhere a little bit more sensible. We can take a look at this. The ores just floating in the air and everything dug out to that absurd depth from where we are here in the mountain is pretty cool to see. And you know what, as a little reward for myself, because I did notice a couple of blocks of it around here, I'm going to hop up here and I'm going to grab this one piece of emerald ore that's outside of the chunk that we're mining out, and that's very, very nice to get hold of. Now let me show you a couple of things about this. First of all, the statistics page is probably now going to show that, oh, so close. Moss has almost taken over from Netherrack in terms of the block I have mined the most in this world so far. And that is, of course, from mining out all of the tunnels and stuff that we've needed to create for the Nether Hub so far. A lot of that got converted into Nether Brick that's now being used in the Dripstone Cave. But as far as collecting resources goes, we are looking pretty good in terms of moss, and I've also been collecting a lot of sand, as I mentioned earlier. Clicking the times used statistic will sort this by how many times we've used a specific item, of course, and it's pretty clear that we're using a lot of bone meal. Now, this won't entirely be part of this project. I have bone mealed plenty of other things in the course of this series so far, but given that we've only used six stacks of bones, and the bones will break down to three stacks of bone meal each, but you multiply that by six, and we're still getting like 1100, like 11 50-ish in terms of bone meal use, but then you consider that the composters are making more bone meal for us. I reckon I've probably used about 1,300, yeah, about, about 1,300 bone meal so far 
in making all of this go away. <laughs> and frankly, even were we doing this with a beacon and haste and an efficiency pickaxe, I think we've still been able to do it in more or less a fraction of the time we would have otherwise, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me, and that pace is only going to continue as we go down through the deep slate layers and see what ore distribution looks like at the bottom of the world as well. But for now, that's where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.